Hi everyone and welcome to Vocabulary TV. This is our 33rd video lesson on roots, prefixes and suffixes in English vocabulary. In this episode, we are going to cover the prefix eu which is found in several words of Greek origin which can be seen hanging on the tree branches and the prefix lends the meaning good or well to the main word. With this beautiful link that connects these words starting with eu, let's try to explore and learn them further. Perhaps the most popular word that starts with eu is eureka. Eureka is an expression of joy or satisfaction and literally means I have found it. Like all words having the prefix eu, it is of Greek origin. The exclamation eureka is famously attributed to the ancient Greek scholar Archimedes. The story goes that he had stepped into a bath and noticed that the water level rose whereupon he suddenly understood that the volume of water displaced must be equal to the volume of the part of his body he had submerged. As the realization dawned upon him that the volume of irregular objects could be measured with precision, which was previously an intractable problem, he is said to have become so eager to share his discovery with the world that he leapt out of his bathtub and ran through the streets of Syracuse naked. So, it is not uncommon to encounter the word in daily usage. For instance, look at the following sentence. The answer hit me and Eureka I cried. Next word is Euphoria. Euphoria is a state of mind when you feel extremely good. That is to say, it is a feeling or state of intense excitement and happiness. If we look at the word origin, Around 17th century, the word denoted the well-being produced in a sick person by the use of drugs. So sometimes the word euphoria denotes a feeling of exaggerated or unfounded well-being. An example sentence is, Radha has been in 7th heaven ever since Sham asked her out, said Meera, dismissing her friend's euphoria. Similar phrases containing the same meaning are, being on the top of the world or being on cloud nine. And of course, in India, we have a very popular rock band by that name, credited with beautiful songs such as Myri. Next word, which is equally common and important in English is euphemism. The word derives from the prefix eu meaning well and fem meaning speaking. So euphemism essentially refers to those cases when one tries to use good words while speaking instead of offensive or embarrassing ones. If you look up its meaning in Oxford Dictionary, it goes like, a mild or indirect word or expression substituted for one considered to be too harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant or embarrassing. A simple example would be this boy referring to himself as hygienically challenged instead of dirty. We use such expressions in English language every day. Like for instance, instead of saying that someone has died, we might use the phrase he passed away. Instead of saying that someone is handicapped or disabled, we might use the term physically challenged or even differently abled to refer to such a person. Similarly, an employer might tell one of his unwanted employees that we have to let you go, which is a milder term for the expression we are firing you, so clean your desk and be gone the next morning, which would obviously sound very blunt and insensitive, though both expressions mean that the guy has lost his job. In daily conversations, when you ask someone as to what his or her current occupation is, you might get the response, oh, I am between jobs nowadays, which is nothing but a euphemism or less embarrassing expression for, I am unemployed. And to make one's profession sound good, one might use and prefer the designation a sanitary engineer instead of being called a garbage collector. At last, let us suppose two women are talking to each other and one of them remarks, you seem to have gained a few extra pounds lately or even you look quite full figured. I think it's a very kind thing to say. But what it actually means is that the other female has become quite fat or even obese. As you would have guessed by now, euphemisms are so popular as these expressions sound polite 
and help us avoid speaking something that may be very harsh or unpleasant to hear. To summarize, euphemisms make what you speak sound good. Then we have one word which is one of the biggest ethical dilemmas for societies around the world. The question on euthanasia and whether it should be allowed or not. Derived from euthanos from prefix eu meaning good and thanatos meaning death. The word euthanasia literally means a good or easy death. The term euthanasia is also understood as mercy killing. Euthanasia means painless killing of a patient suffering from an incurable and painful disease or in an irreversible coma. The best example that comes to my mind is the role played by Hrithik Roshan in the movie Guzarish. The protagonist meets with a terrible accident as a result of which he is forced to spend the rest of his life with a total body paralysis confined to his wheelchair and is so helpless that he is not even able to remove a fly from his nose in the movie the main character pleads to the court that his life is not worth living and so he be allowed to die that is he be allowed euthanasia next word is eupepsia and sometimes remembering the meaning of the other root becomes a challenge but it would be quite cool if you try and link these words to some common things that you already know i am pointing towards the brand pepsi did you know that the drink pepsi was first introduced as brass drink in united states in 1893 by caleb bradham who made and sold it at his drug store bradham renamed it pepsi cola in 1898 as he believed that the drink was more than a refreshment but a healthy cola aiding in digestion and getting its roots from the word dyspepsia meaning indigestion so there goes the connection eu means good and pepsi means digestion so the word means good digestion the opposite of eupepsia is dyspepsia meaning bad digestion then we have the word euphony and its opposite word cacophony The Greek root phone means sound. It's the same root that is shared by several other words like telephone. Named so because it can send sounds over a long distance. So euphony literally means a good sound and euphony refers to the quality of being pleasing to the ear. Like I can perhaps say that the sound of a nightingale singing is euphony. A related adjective is euphonious and an example for its usage would be The boss seemed visibly flattered by the stream of fine euphonious phrases uttered by his secretary. Cacophony on the other hand means bad sounding. Any sound hearing which you would want to shut your ears to block it out can be described as a cacophony. Our next word based on the prefix eu is eugenics. The prefix eu means good. and the base word genos means race or stock or kin the base word is the same as the one from which we derive several other words like genes which we all know is a basic unit of heredity which determines certain characteristics in the offspring eugenics refers to the science or rather a social philosophy of improving human population by controlled breeding The aim is to increase the occurrence of desirable heritable characteristics. You would be surprised to know that around 1920s and 1930s there were many takers and proponents of such eugenic ideals and in some countries people with less desired or undesired traits were reportedly forced to undergo sterilization so that they could not reproduce and pass on their so called unwanted traits. but the movements lost steam later nowadays with advancements in gene editing and assistive reproductive technologies eugenics has again become a relevant issue time is not far when parents might desire fairer healthier babies ones with more iq perhaps a girl who looks like priyanka chopra or a boy who is as intelligent as einstein and actually get one Then we have the word eulogy which literally means good words and hence words of praise. 
though its meaning could be traced to the Greek word elegy or the Latin word elogium, meaning inscription on a tomb. Well, in today's English, eulogy, which is a noun, refers to any speech or piece of writing that praises someone or something highly, especially as a tribute to someone who has just died. For instance, at Martha's memorial service, instead of delivering a spoken eulogy, Nick sang a song he had written in her honor. The corresponding verb is eulogize. To eulogize is to praise someone highly in speech or writing. Here I will quote an example from recent news. The media around the world eulogized the great boxer Muhammad Ali, one of the most significant and celebrated sports figure of the 20th century, as he passed away on 3rd June. Though the word eulogize can easily be used in other contexts as well, that is, apart from praising someone who has just died. Like in the following sentence, Critics everywhere have eulogized her new novel. A related word is eulogistic, which is an adjective. Notice how it is used in the following sentence. The newspapers were filled with dozens of eulogistic articles in his memory. Our last words that are a little rare and yet are based on the prefix are Eucrasia and Eudemony. They are quite similar actually. While Eucrasia means a normal state of health and physical well-being, the opposite word for which would be Discrasia, Eudemony means happiness or welfare. So something that is eudaimonic is conducive to happiness. Now test your understanding of the words learnt in this lesson by filling in the blanks below. It is recommended that you pause the video when the timer starts. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hope you liked it. Subscribe our channel and stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.